I think there's hundreds and thousands of people getting squashed, pushed. It's an absolutely stunning event and I will uh, remember my whole life. On the way to Anandpur Sahib for Hola Mahalla. So Hola Mahalla is like the Sikh festival of war where throughout this land Holi had always been celebrated um, as a festival um, commemorating the, the the forever ongoing battle between good and evil, good and bad. Um, and Guru Gobind Singh Ji through Hola Mahalla really brought this to life in a way that um, made the Khalsa live these valleys of the Sun Sapahi. So the Anandpur Sahib had their Durbar, they had their, their, their military, they had their, their training facilities for the Khalsa and Hola Mahalla became a day where they would celebrate all of this. They would celebrate the tradition of Langar, they would celebrate the tradition of doing Seva, the Holy Kidney Sant to Save. They would celebrate the, the Marshu side of Sikhi by having the Singhs um, perform like a military procession. And so what we see at Hola Mahalla now is a sort of coming of all of this together in one of the kind of biggest Sikh celebrations of the year. Um, one of the things for, for me personally that's really special about it is that when Guru Gobind Singh Ji left Anandpur Sahib, Kida uh, Killa, um, on the way to Chumkar Sahib, where we, where we know that Jang and everything that happened there, when some of the Gorsiks had Bairag about leaving Anandpur Sahib and saying, Maharaj, we've lived here for 18 years, this is our home, this is you know the city, this is the city founded by Guru Teg Bahadur Ji, will we ever come back here or are we leaving this place for good? And, and Mala said, we will come back and the Khalsa will come back forever to celebrate Hola Mahalla here. And even when during the times of Jasa Singh Alu Alia and Sardar Bagel Singh, when the Singhs did Raj of Dili, they left to come and celebrate Hola Mahalla. So throughout our history, it's just been such an important festival and, and we're really lucky to, to be going there. Maharaj used to go to each of the Langas and, and see, you know, sometimes they would go at night to see will I be fed when there's, there's other people or when food's finished out, will people make it? So Maharaj would kind of, um, you know, make the Sikhs have that spirit of you never know where your Guru, when your Guru is going to come and Maharaj would come and Maharaj would go through all of the Langars. And even now people come with that Bhavana that, that Maharaj is there in the Langar, that Guru Gobind Singh Ji is there amongst the Sangat. And, you know, in the Mahalla, when the Nahang Singhs take it out on the Mahalla day, you know, they have a horse for Guru Gobind Singh Ji at the front. The Guru Gobind Singh Ji is there leading the armies of the Khalsa. There, so that um, belief that Guru Gobind Singh Ji is here, um, you know, is, is very much prevalent still uh, in the Sikhs. And in terms of like practical uh, tips for someone who hasn't come to Allah Mahalla before, what would you say to them? Like, what, what should they do? When should they come? I, I think if you haven't come before, the easiest thing would be to, to try and get a room and arrange it well in advance. Uh, and then coming here means you've got the kind of comfort of a room, you know, some some people uh, It's a kind of it can be an overwhelming experience uh, Having your room having your own space is really important and then just just to kind of go around the, Each of the asthans, you know, see each of the different langas and you know So many of the six sampradas and jathibad is here and they all have their darbars and their mriyadda in different ways and you get to see all of that in a really close proximity at once and that's one of the other amazing things that comes here. They, they used to say that if a Singh doesn't come at Hola Mahalla and then Nahang Singh, it would be assumed to be he must have passed away if he didn't make it for Hola Mahalla this year. So Sari Hundiate, Sari and the Darshan Hundia, you can you can see all the Mahapursha, all the Sampradas, all these towns in one place at one time. So, so, so that's probably one of the biggest things to try and take advantage of. Uh, it's really nice seeing all the Sangat coming like yeah. on tractors and like so many different ways. So much shut down. Huh? Look at this, cha cha bot there, you know. Maharaj said that Bachanav will come back every year. And you know, since we've been here for a few hours, we've just seen so much celebration. Tractors, trolleys, cars, mobiles, skaters. Um, it's just, you know, the, it's Jidan, as Maharaj said, we're seeing that now in front of us, Hannah. Huh? Right. Anand Bursasha. The city of bliss, which was founded by Guru Teg Bahadur Ji, and then you know it's the birthplace of the Khalsa as well. When we take Amrit, we're told that this is our pind, this is our home, this is our spiritual home. This is you know if we identify as being part of the Khalsa, this is this is this is the place of our birth. 
this is the place of our belonging yeah i think it's really important because like some people don't have that sense of belonging in the world and Maharaj gave us that by saying I am your father, Mother Sayadeva is your mother and this is your place of birth if you haven't got anyone else or anywhere else Maharaj is saying this is, this is you as I'm you you know it's the Natami and the coming here like it's our Padsha celebration they're still here huh? they're not our father from some time ago and this is their Mahama this is their Rupma this, this is their greatness and their, their tradition that they have started that their blessing is to be part of still is there anything like um, Maria Dawais or anything specific we should do darshan of when coming to Anandpur Sahib? There's, there's lots of his tarns, I think, you know, Hola Mahalas one time, but the other time, because Maharaj was here 18, year, 18 years, and then even in Hamachal there's his tarns, there's so many really, really important his tarns, you know, Bapar Sahib, Maharaj Rok Chaupai Sahib, um, you know, the his tarns where Mata uh, Sundarji got married to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Guru Ke Lahore, um, Sera Sahib on the way there, the the kind of the main fortresses and then the five battle posts like Taragar Sahib and others. There's there's so many asthans and, and there's so much history and I think it's really important people bring the children. Shidi Ba Gurdara, um, just just a little bit up ahead, a little bit up ahead, but lots of traffic. Ote the Singh stayed there from Maharaj's time, uh, and the from then till now there's so much. Um, history uh, that we can still see. So, for example, the Nishan Sahib that marks um, Prashad Dihatis, uh, who was a kind of white elephant given to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, and was one of the causes of the jealousy that the local Pahari Raja, the, 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 the chiefs and kings of the mountains around this area, became jealous of the Guru because he had this elephant, Maharaj had this elephant in their possession. And when Anand Prasad was under siege, obviously the Sikhs were suffering a lot of starvation and Prasad Dihati unfortunately passed away during that time. Um, we've still got the Babek the Langar and the Ku, the, the ancient well and, and the Sikhs today, they still operate it with the kind of rope pulley system of pulling fresh water from un, under the earth. So you still got that and then you've got the Tara Sahibs commemorating um, like Baba Gyan Singh Ji, uh, who I think were the eighth Jathidar of Vurdadal from that side, and other Mahapur and Shahid Singhs. Um, you've also kind of had Pratan Sarblogran Sarups um, that were at the Sarblogonga as well, kind of showing a continuity of Seva that Singhs had always had around the Takat Sahibs of Guru Granth Sahib, Dasun Granth Sahib, and, and Sri Sarblogani. So, like, you see from these Asthans that have been kind of operating for hundreds of years, the the that history and the different ways in which it's been commemorated throughout the centuries. So, so again in Holi, Holi being a, a, an ancient tradition, people would typically throw colour on one another uh, as a form of, of celebration. Just everyone's... The tyres lost it again, I think. Tyres lost it. The tyres change, bro. Pengchal lagga hona ho the dal, the picture la lenne. We blocked the whole road. Well, look at this. This inna Maharaji ke paas the. Kaal se baas the khol diye ke paas. This is the Buddha Dal, the Pada of the Nahang Singhs. So you can see the horses, you can see the tents, um, you can see where the Singhs have got over here, uh, the Langar. So the Nahang Singhs, they, they live in what we call a Dal, what's known as a kind of battalion. Uh, and they live that lifestyle of being constantly on the move. So since Maharaj's time, it's been like this in the Dal, and that's one of the most powerful things about coming here. You get the experience of how the Singhs lived 
in Maharaj's his time in the Vihir, where they were always on the move. You can see the horses, they're all shining, they're, they're glistening, the coats are glistening. You can see they're all standing, like, you know, these horses are trained in the way that battle horses were trained during the Khalsa's time. And this is, you know, these are the things that are Chakravarti, they'll stay in one place for three or four days. We'll walk, if you look there, Babaji taking the pony, that's the Jahidar of the Dal. Jahidar's job is to do the most seva. You know, he needed water, he needed something, he didn't say it to anyone, he went and got it. And whatever someone seva is, the Langris and the Langri, the Kodeale, those that look after the horses with the horses, that's all there is here. It is seva ya in the Dal. And that's the coming here and seeing how these things live the Jeevan. That's one of the biggest lessons we can learn. How it's a Jeevan devoted just to seva and living in Nimrata. That where the two Nishana Sahib is at, that's where she debug is. And over there at the top right, we can see Kesagar Sahib there. So where Maharaj would be at Kesagar Sahib, then the Hang Singhs would live here at Shehidi Bagh, uh, over here. And then that Asthan there has been looked after by the Hang Singhs from, uh, for hundreds of years now. When we go there, we'll look, you can see the, the Babek, the Langar, the Nishana Sahib, everything's been sort of operating continuously. Um, since that time from Maharaj's time. Kardikalai, Levananda, Levananda. Kardikalai. What about like Ishnan Pani and everything? Ishnan is so, you've ever got the Srovas, we got Srova, or whatever there's Pulla Pani, Chalda Pani, whatever type of water you get, wherever it comes from, there's no hope of hot water, warm <laughs> water in the morning, it's typically cold. Like it's one of the most important things where the Dal goes, that they have a water supply. Um, it's a lot easier now because you can have an Ishnan at a tap. Whereas before the Dal, they would only use fresh pani, chalda pani. So water that came from a fresh source, either from a kind of clean flowing river or from a well um, where the water could be taken straight from the source like we see at uh, Shiddibag. So like it, things have got maybe a little bit easier than they were but it's still quite a rough way of living maybe to how most of us are used to. Sometimes uh, it's, got, it's got ill, the horse has got ill. It's like same way we get ill. Sometimes, you know, it could be the heat, it could be the weather. Um, it's just take, it's taking ill. So they're calling a, a, a vet. The horses in the dal, they're, they're really well looked after. Because they have some of the um, the 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 nasala of like the you know the, the most favourable horse lineages that you have in Punjab, um, the, some of the top vets in Punjab go around each of the Nahang Singh Dals and, and, and make sure that the horses get the best medical care. So the Jahidar is just trying to call a doctor now to try and get someone to attend to the horse and look after it. You can see how concerned in it the the seva that is his you know, his. जान पाई टिल लग गया भाई पट्टे पा रहे हो मिट्टी मिट्टी खा गया मिट्टी खा गया बच्चों जी हां जी और वैद्य सद दिया जी हां जी ठीक है भी लाए ग्लूकोज भी लाए सके ठीक है ठीक नहीं है भाई ठीक है जी खड़ा कीता इस वेरे हां जी हां जी ये दाड़े रही है ये तो ठीक है चल ग्रुप पर लगा दे तेल ना ना छेती खोल दे तो तेल ना हो जाए भाई हां जी अच्छा जी तेल ता है जी जी यार बोल देना so that's the other thing, like in the Dal you used to get books that some of the things had written about how to look after horses. So in terms of what masale, in terms of what oil, in terms of what to do if they get ill, there's quite an expert knowledge that these things have because this is what they do every day, day and night, huh? Uh, looking after them. Also like a lot of the people that come into the Dal, like it's a lot of children, so you get like a lot of these youngsters that are maybe orphans um, or have got like house situations where they've maybe been getting beaten at home and they run away. Like kids come enjoying the dal at a very young age. The things get in the habit then of looking after the horses and just learning from the older things about how to care for them. मत्था इन्ना दा गर्मी रंदा इन्ना मत्था गर्मी मत्था मोरे बसे नीर दा गर्मी आ कन्ना दा बदला ठीक है जी दे सेइंग इन द सेम वे दैट व्हेन मेबी अ चाइल्ड देयर विल चेक देयर फोरहेड 
to check if they've got a temperature with a horse, if the horse has got a bukhar, if the horse has got a fever, they need to check the ear and the ears go cold. The forehead stays warm, so the ears go cold and that's how they can tell the horse has got a fever. It's carrying a fever just now. And you can see here they just come to give it. Yeah. Again, you can see the Singh's kind of doing it himself. You know? They kind of, they have to be all rounders and. This uh, Gurdwara Sahib is known as Shidi Bagh, uh, Shidi Bagh being the field or the garden of the Shahids. Uh, here in Pant Prakash, he says that when Maharaj was uh, Anandpur Sahib and the Sikhs asked Maharaj to leave the fort now, when Maharaj came to the Khalsa who was stationed at Shidi Bagh and said, Look, the Sikhs want to leave Anandpur Sahib now because of the siege that had been held by the Mughal and the Hell Chiefs. And the Singh said to Maharaj that we don't want to leave. They, we only take birth for the purpose of serving you. And if we have the opportunity to fight dying alongside you and obtain shahidi, that we will consider that our good fortune. And we would only take birth to come back and serve you. And at that point, it said in Pant Prakash that Maharaj says, Tan Khalsa, Tan Pant Pachangi. The, the Khalsa is Tan and the Pachangis are Tan, that they've kept the beej of Sikhi alive. And so this site here commemorates those warriors and it commemorates those martyrs at Shidi Bag. Uh, and for hundreds of years then, this, the spirit of the Shids has been kept alive. You can see in the back, Shidi Ragri ongoing. You can see Nahan Singh from all over Punjab coming and, and staying here and Sangat coming here to do the Darshan Mele at the shrine. But it's where the Khalsa stayed at the times that Guru Gobind Singh Ji was stationed at Nankosa. You know when you come home and you have that happiness, in 1735, the Dal Khalsa split up into different groups that were known as missiles. You had the Buddha Dal and you had the Tarna Dal. Of the Tarna Dal, the main missile was the Shidi missile that was led by Baba Deep Singh Ji. And over time, the Tarna Dal, the main missiles become Baba Bakala Sahib and Jehdar Baba Gajan Singh Ji currently uh, at Shidi Bagh, one of the main Asthans. So from Baba Deep Singh Ji, Baba Garbak Singh Ji coming on, uh, a lineage of 14 Jatidars. They've held that sort of same Mariyadda that's been around since then. Yeah, the, the tree here, you can see, has been here since Maharaj's time. And the two Nishan Sahibs here, one is for Prashad Hathi, which was the white elephant that Guru Gobind Singh Ji was gifted. And the elephant used to wash Maharaj's charam, their feet, with its trunk. And they used to stay here with the Singh's at Shahidi Bagh. And the other Nishan Sahib, the Thada, was um, Jehdar Baba Gyan Singh, the Jehdar of Buddha Dal. After the Anglo Sikh Wars, the Dal went to Hajur Sahib for 12 years, and as they came back into Punjab, they settled at Shidi Bagh around here, and this is where Baba Gyan Singh did, did today. Amiv Gyanni Satnam Singh Ji from Jogewal. Gyanni Ji is um, doing seva as part of the Sikh Chaitana Leher. Over the last 10 years, there's been a lot of Bayadmiya of Guru Granth Sahib Ji happening across Punjab in particular. And what's been happening is there's been a lack of legal action taken against those who have been responsible. So Bai Sahib is trying to collect 10 million signatures and send these to the Prime Minister to express the strong feelings of the Sikhs that those that are responsible for Biyadabi in this country, we expect the legal system to take solid action against them 
and that as an entire Sikh community, we're really, really disappointed at the legal and political response to Biadabiya happening in Punjab. So it's a massive seva that Bai Sahib is doing. The Biadabiya of Guru Granth Sahib Ji as a living guru is an issue that impacts and hearts Sikhs all over the world. And it's something that Bai Sahib has devoted a number of years to trying to improve and raise awareness of through the Sikh Chetana Lahir. Bai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Bai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. सिख चेतना लहर नाम की मुहिम चलाई गई है जिमें कि भाई साहब ने इंग्लिश के दसिया कि जो गुरु साहब सच्चे पातशाह जी दियाँ सत्त अठ साल तो बेदबिया हुई उन्होंने सानू कोई इंसाफ नहीं मिले ना दोषियों को सज़ा हुई है वो वास्ते मोगे इलाके के महापुरख संत ज्ञानी गुरमेज सिंह जी खोसा कोटला संत बाबा महेंद्र सिंह जी जनेर वाले होर गुरमुख प्यारे दास भी साथ दे रहे हैं सिख चेतना लहर की मुहिम चलाई है सिग्नेचर मुहिम जिदे तहत एक करोड़ सैन करके राष्ट्रपति को दिता जाएगा ता जो दोषियों सज़ा मिले तो ये बेदबी मामलों की बरीकी के जाँच की जाए अज तक जो भी बेदबिया हुई ने दोषियों कहा जाता है कि यह मानसिक रोगी ने पर सोच वाली गल है भी सत्त अठ साल पेल मानसिक रोगी कितने से तो इस करके एजेंसिया दया चाल ने सरकार भी मिली हो सकती है तो यदि जी जाँच है पूरी बरीकी के होनी चाहिए है वो वास्ते ये सिग्नेचर मुहिम चलाई गई है तो असी सारे देश विदेश दियातान बेनती करते हैं भाई ये लहर जी सारे की सी है कोई संस्था नहीं आप सारे साथ दईए वो तो वह सैन करिए भी आप करवाईए भी ये मनोरथ है तो मैं थोड़ी जी बेनती करा कि जो प्रोफेसर दविंदर पाल सिंह जी भुलर उन्होंने फांसी की सज़ा पिछले समय च हो गई सी उस वे भी सठ लख सैन जोड़ा सी करके दिता गया तो उन्होंने फांसी की सज़ा रद्द हुई सी इस उम्मीद को लैके भी साड़ी भी गल हूँ सुनी जाएगी आप एक करोड़ तो वह सैन जोड़ा करके राष्ट्रपति तक पहुँचता करना है तो आप सरबद्ध संगत बेनती है भाई रल मिल के सारे साथ दौ वाहू जी का खालसा वाहू जी की That's where when Guru Gobind Singh Ji said, "Can anyone take the roof of Mark Al? Can anyone come as the roof of Akal Purk?" The Baba Fateh Singh Ji went and got themselves ready with a big damala, a massive farla, and put on the nila bana. And it's one of the key sakhiyan associated with the roof of the Nang Singh, the roof of the Khalsa. So it's always special going, going there. Baba Fateh Singh Ji says, "Tan." Cheese break. Little juice break. Yeah. <laughs> so behind us is Takht Kesgarh Sahib. Takht Kesgarh Sahib is the Janamas Thaan of the Khalsa. This is where Guru Gobind Singh Ji conducted the first Amar Sanchar ceremony in 1699. It's also where Guru Gobind Singh Ji used to hold the royal court, the Darbar, while they were at Anandpur Sahib. And one sakhi from that time is when Sangat came to Guru Gobind Singh Ji and requested Maharaj that they wanted to have darshan of Mahakal. They wanted to have darshan of a form of a Kal Purk that was beyond time and space. And Maharaj said, "Is there anyone who can take the robe of Mahakal?" and show them to the sangat and baba fateh singh said to guru gobind singh ji that if you bless me then i will take this rope so baba fateh singh ji came here you can see which is a little distance from the takht sahib and the sthan known as manji sahib the malgad sahib and here baba fateh singh ji came and they tied the mala a really uchcha the mala so the mala is mentioned in guru granth sahib ji is the style of the star that was worn by warriors um and it's mentioned in the bani of guru sahibs uh, for, uh um, and we find and mention in guru granth sahib ji so when baba fateh singh ji came here and he wore an uchcha damala and they wore a blue bana and they sajad themselves in different shastar as they got to guru gobind singh ji um guru gobind singh ji had a conversation with baba fateh singh ji and that captures the atihas of this sthan वे दे से सजे जो दमाला छटे खूब फररा अरब जो सोहे चक्कर खंडे तोरे वाला दे दे चक्कर द दस्तार द दमाला द फरला दिस इज द रूप ऑफ महाकाल सजे दो दमाला छटे खूब फररा अजब सोहे चक्कर खंडे तोरे वाला गुरु जी ने बाबा फतेह सिंह जी को बुलाया गुरु जी खौड़ बाबा फतेह सिंह जी से जैसा पंथ ऐसा मुख से लाया द एज यू हैव 
adorned yourself in the roop of Mahakal, this is the roop that I will give to the Panth he deserves. Hama Kali Sabke Wali Hamra Panth Niara Hai. That they will be the Akalis, the worshippers of Akal Purk, and the Panth will be distinct and unique from all other Hamra Panth Niara Hai. Deen Majab Ka Jod Jo Kina Slotar Fadaya Karara Hai. That they will be forever ready when the Sikh Taram is under threat to stand at the vanguard and protect those who attack Taram. Gagan Mandal Mein Bunga Hamara Maa Kaal Rakhwara Hai. That on one side that the star, the bunga is adorned high, and on the other side it means that the spiritual avasta of the Gorsiks of the Akalis is to be merged with Akal Purk through your Dasam Dwar, to be one with Akal Purk and Jodeve Gagan Mandal Mein Bunga Hamara Maa Kaal Rakhwara Hai. The Maa Kaal, the Akal Purk that we're Jodeve with, with the Sachi Leve Bin Dena Mani, without that connection, then Mara says we're dishonored. And we have that connection through Gurbani if Maharaj gives it to Gagan Mandal Mai Bunga Hamara Ma Kaal Rakhwara Hai. That Ma Kaal is our protector. And then Sir Par Mugat, this Damala is the crown from the Akal Purk. Sir Par Mugat, Mugat Par Chakkar. Upon the crown uh, is the Chakkar. Aya Jabhalara Hai. Naan Guru Gobind Singh, Tod Aga Sisa Hamara Hai. The Hey Guru Naan Dev Ji, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Avtar of the Ten Sroofs, the former Guru Granth Sahib Ji, before you we present our seas, our body, our head, we give to you. So that slogan, the Mahalid Abola, captures the atyas of when the Sangat came to Guru Gobind Singh Ji at the Takat Sahib, and Baba Fatih Singh Ji got ready in this roop of Mahankal at the Mahalgarh Sahib here. And we all wear the Mahalli today, but knowing the atyas of where it came from, I think is really important. So we've met, um Mr. Tarnadar Ji, Jahedar Ne Mukhi, Baba Gajan Singh Ji, yeah. and we meant uh, what was the Mahant's name? Mahant who? Mahant Taloch Singh. There, Baba Jade Vidwan, the Jame Dasam Maharaj, the Sri Salbro Maharaj. They do all the katha in the dal and stuff as well. Santhya Vi Singh Anu put on there. So it's more we Mahapurush came here. We're gonna go see Baba Taloch Singh Ji now as well. So that'll be nice. Then Baba Jagan Singh Ji. So yeah, Darshan Mili Dar. So. Reunited. Alright, what's happening? Uh, We've reunited with Omkar Singh in Anandpur Sahib. And this is the Nishkam Pratwara. Oh, Yo, what's the longer? It's banging, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Omkar Singh. How's it been so far while you're here? Yeah, it's been really amazing actually. What have you been getting up to? So, so far it's been jam packed. Like, I, felt like, I feel like I haven't slept at all. So, when we got here, we had a little bit of um, rest and then we went straight to Dark Slive. And then we went to um, Dede that set up around here. We got to see Baba Dar Singh Ji, a few other Mahapurs. And then we also went today to Paikaniya Jesus Han. And it was really amazing there because we got to see the, you know, the iconic photo with Baikaniyaji and the bag in their hand. Yeah, the water picture. Yeah, we actually got to see the bag as always well, preserved there. Wow. And yeah, that was very, very blessed to see that. And we also got to change the Nishan side there wow. and do save of the Nishan side. And that was also a very blessed experience, also. Yeah. How was, how's your journey been? Amazing. Yeah. 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 I went to Chandigarh to help Poti Seva. Yeah. And uh, they were doing uh, seva of uh, hand like handwritten uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji's Yeah. And they had just completed it in time for Holla Mahalla. Huh. So then we came here two days ago and we brought Maharaj Jisru to Baba Avtar Singh Ji's uh, like, uh, place okay. that, that they've made. And now they're doing, they've done Prakash of it for the first time and they're doing like an account part from it. So that, that was just amazing, that whole journey and experience. And we're trying to make a short film about it as well. Yeah. So be, like, be sure to check that out on Porti Siva. Oh, wicked. So, what, what would you say to people who are thinking of coming to Hulla? Like, what's the experience like? It's, it's amazing. It's just, you can't put it into words. Yeah. Like, the way I described it to Rohan V yesterday, yeah. I described it like, South or Nagar Kirtan, but all day, all night, never ending. T times a thousand. Times a thousand. The, the amount of like, the atmosphere, everything is just amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. There's so much sangha, they're so piari as well. Yeah, Everyone yeah. so much love. 
You can feel the love, isn't it? Yeah, you, you can, can actually feel the love. Proper. And you can see like people have travelled for days on end proper, yeah. to get here sleeping in their vans. So, yeah, in such hard conditions. Yeah. But then everyone's got a smile on their face, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the end, everyone's really happy to be here. Also, what lunga did you just eat right now? We just had a really good chips and beans. And the beans are Heinz beans all the way from UK. Wow. Bought them, bought them with us. Yeah. You can't even imagine in India having chips and beans, but <laughs> we just had like, the most amazing uh, lunch at the Nishkram Centre. Not Nishkram was found here at Nanpur side. So, so thanks, John God. So we're in the Pada of Shrovni Pant Akali Buddhadal at Anandpur Sahib. And it's quite a special experience for everyone that's come today. And I think that it brings to life what it was like to be a Singh in the 16 and 1700s. If we look back at the history of the Buddhadal, during the time that Guru Gobind Singh Ji um, passed on the Guru Gaddi or Guru Nanak Dev Ji on the south to Guru Granth Sahib Ji. They appointed the Khalsa uh, with Panj Piyari, um, uh, Panj Piyari led by Baba Binod Singh Ji. Um, from the time passed Baba Binod Singh Ji, Baba Darbara Singh Ji, and after them, Nabab Kapoor Sam came to lead that group of Singhs that during the first part of the 1700s stayed to com committed to living in an unchanged way from the ways that Guru Gobind Singh Ji had taught them. Now that included horseback, that included hunting, that included camping out on tents and living forever on the move in what's known as Chakravarti uh, because this was the way of Guru Nanak Dev Ji in a sense to travel the world and spread the message of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, spread langar and give the message of Akal work through the form of Gurbani, either through doing a Khanpat or singing of Kirtan. This is a way of bringing spiritual peace on, on this earth and is one of the biggest sevas that the Nang Singhs do today. Importantly, they also connect us with a lot of our traditions that we would no longer see um, have we ever succumbed to the oppression or the um, subjugation of who we are as people and that was established by Guru Gobind Singh Ji's teachings on what they say it is to live as an authentic Khalsa. That includes Khalsa Sojo Chada Tarang, the Khalsa are those that ride on horses, Khalsa Sojo Karanatajang, the Khalsa who practice the art of war daily. And this is what we see today. The horses are maintained to a battle standard. We have seen the Sikhs training in the use of weaponry from a young age. Children are taught how to defend themselves from attacks from large crowds. Because this is the environment of where Sikhs and our traditions stemmed from. It was a place of violence. And the Hang Singhs through the 1700s, if we look at the Kalukari and the role of Jasa Singh and others, it was there to protect the Sikhs and the Sikhs would take retreat in living in this way which was known as Jalda Vahir. So that period of the mid-1700s 
when every Sikh in villages was being hunted. Sikhs were forced to live in this way, essentially as nomads, uh, prepared for war, whether that be man, woman or child. And it is that same spirit that the Nahang Singhs have carried because for them it represents an eternal tradition. It represents a way of the four ages and it as represents a way that is both primal and highly spiritual. It is to live a life within the earth, but to not be of it. It is to live a life in the service of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, recognizing that Guru Gobind Singh Ji are here. And through then, the time of colonialism, when Akali Fula Singh read this group of the Khalsa as their leader, we see that these ways started to be oppressed, that to wear the blue bana, to carry Shastra, meant one would be hunted down, specifically after the Anglo-Sikh Wars, at which time the Jehdar of Buddha Akali Baba Hanuman Singh was killed and hunted down after being pursued by the British after the first Anglo-Sikh Wars. And then this tradition and this way of living at one time fell upon just five individuals. That was led by Baba Gyan Singh Ji from Hajur Sahib. Baba Gyan Singh Ji for 12 years led this group at Hajur Sahib while they were being hunted from Punjab. And when they returned, they set about trying to establish the glory of the Panth as it had been at the time of Akali Fula Singh Ji. And they set their base at Anand Prasar Ji, specifically the Shawnee of Shihidi Bagh where we went today. And we saw the Ngita Sahib there, the, the memorial, the Shan Sahib, the battle flag, the flag of victory that stands there for Baba Gyan Singh Ji as the Jathadar of the Panth. And so the history of Anand Prasar is is very relevant and to know what's happened in these shrines in the 1700s, the 1600s, from the times of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, is really to understand who we are, why we dress the way we dress, the attitudes that we have, the way that we worship, and what we believe, because as people, each time we have tried to be oppressed, we come out stronger. In the 1700s, 70% of Sikhs were killed, and when everyone thought they were near extinction, Baba Bhutta Singh and Baba Garja Singh emerged. And this is what to be a Nahang Singh is. It is to be the living example of what Guru Gobind Singh Ji said the Khalsa is. We saw today and had an opportunity to speak with Jathadar Baba Jigandar Singh Ji. He represents the contemporary age leadership. He represents the present day leadership of this movement that was established by Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And the Jeevan is one of waking up at 12 o'clock because that is the first battle, that is the first jang that one does with their mind. And waking up and doing the Nitrim and doing Simran and saying about doing Seva, we saw them having Singhs unload the crops that were to be fed to the horses. We saw the love that the Singhs have for their horses and the true meaning of what it is to be a Janpai when a horse is ill the whole family tends to it with love. You see amongst the Nahang Singhs what we, I think, would have seen at the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. We see at Shihid Di Bagh the same practices, even if we look at the Prakash of Guru Granth Sahib Ji alongside Dasun Granth Sahib Logan Sahib. These were key traditions that the Nahang Singhs preserve up until today. In each of the Takat Sahibs, which we have seen from some of the Gurdwara Sahibs today, we have Prakash of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib Ji. This was consistent at all of the Takat Sahibs and we know this through reporting that we have from the 1800s. And at each of the Bunga Sahibs around um, the Takat Sahibs, for example at Matapago Bunga and Sarblo Bunga around Hajur Sahib, the Bunga of Gyanri Sukha Singh Ji around Patana Sahib, the Bunga of Shihid Baba Gurbak Singh Ji at Akal Takat and the, the Shihidi Bagh Bunga at Kesgar Sahib. Pratan Sroops of Sarblo Granth were preserved here and are still preserved here because in them Guru Gobind Singh Ji gave a very potent message to what it is to be Khalsa. They say that Jab lag Khalsa rahe neara, tab lag tej diyo sara. That as the Khalsa, if you live in this way, if you live as Nyare, then I'll give you everything. And we see today the belief that these Nahang Singhs, they live like kings. They ride the finest horses. Their horses are of the finest breed. They train in the art of weapons and are able to defend themselves and others while committing this 
themselves to feeding them both langa and spiritual wisdom. It is this enlightened way to live is what it is to keep alive this tradition that the Nahang Singhs have done and the original ways of the Khalsa. And we see what is it to be a Nahang Singh from my time with Baba Jaginder Singh Ji. It is to wake up as early as you can and commit yourself with every breath to taking the name of Paramatma and, and anyone that comes to you to give them the same message. So first we met Baba Jaginder Singh Ji, uh, Baba Jaginder Singh Ji, the Jatadar of Buddha Dal. Um, and as we spoke a little bit about the history of Buddha Dal and what it is to live the life of a Gurmukh, Baba Ji explained to us the importance of humility today. Where Sikhs from many Jathe came to, to do darshan of Baba Ji. And Baba Ji said, I have nothing to give you because you have already taken Guru Nanak Dev Ji as your Guru. Uh, and, and it was a really beautiful thing to see and, and a really big lesson, I think, for, for everyone. Baba Ji's Jeevan is. Baba Ji, Ajo Ji, better. Recording, Chaldi Baba Ji, Tusi, Aithe Ajo Ji. Aithe Ajo Ji. Baba Ji, Tusi, Magar Ajo Ji. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to linger, so you better give them a seat, telling them they're wrong. Better <laughs> Baba Ji, Tusi, Magar Ji. Baba Ji, Indra Singh Ji is from the village of Boparai. The Boparai has a taksal there, which is where Santa Gani Sundar Singh Ji, Pint Ramale, um, spent the last of their days on this earth. So they kind of had that Sikhi from there, but also their dad used to go to Rakba at the time of Baba Karam Singh Ji. And then Baba Ji had the Sangat of Baba Lena Singh Ji. So once we asked Baba Ji, how, how, how would you find it so consistently? He's not easy, but how do you always get up at 12 o'clock? And it said because he got in the habit of getting up at 11.30 so he could be with Baba Lena Singh Ji for 12 to do their seva. And that kind of instilled in them the Sikhi and the importance of being Simran uh, that I think reflects how they live their jivan. After that, we met Baba Hari Singh Ji, and Baba Hari Singh Ji came from uh, the Tarnadar Baba Bakala, where they served as the head Granthi for a number of years. And many know them from the Night of God documentary. Uh, Baba Hari Singh's jivan is, is a hugely inspirational one as well. They wake up at 12 o'clock, they, they very rarely sleep, and they commit themselves to joining as many young people around them to living this way of life where. They do Santi of Gurbani, they train in Shastra Vidya, and they keep alive the spirit of, of being a Khalsa. Baba Hari Singh Ji, one of the most sort of inspirational things I've always found about them is that they, they through their life, endured a lot of hardship and they endured it with a call for Hukum. You know, there was very dark times in Punjab at one point, and they have the marks of the torture from that they endured during that time of, on their body. And they wear that with an honor and a dignity that is, is quite amazing. Um, and there they go. What's happening today? Well, as you can see here, Baba Ji is uh, Baba Tar Singh Ji, inspecting all the langar, making sure there's enough um, rasta, there's enough dal sati for all the sangha to come today. Because yesterday was, it was rammed as well, and I think today there's going to be a lot of sangha. Just said um, bye to Baba Ji. They we're going back to Amritsar now, and then now we've made our way to uh, 
Straight up Baba Bidhi Chan Sahib. And we've got to see Baba Ji as well and uh, Mahalla is going to arrive soon. So we're just waiting as you can see the elephants are over there getting ready as well. And it's a lot and a lot of Sangat and very 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 hot. Where are we right now? We're, we're right in the midst of the Hulla Mahalla procession and we, we started at uh, Baba Vidhi Chan's Dera. So yeah. right behind us is some Baba Fad Singh whose family lineage comes from Sri Guru Hazrat inside this time, Baba Vidhi Chan. And we're walking, not we are, we're walking with the whole procession towards uh, the main grounds where they're going to actually start all the games of like the war games. So hopefully we'll get some good footage of that as well. Wicked. All right. It's been really, really hot, firstly. Yeah. But yeah, it's amazing here. And uh, I think there's hundreds and thousands of people getting squashed, pushed. But it's an amazing feeling here. the Mahalla now in the Anandpur Stadium. Absolutely amazing, having a, the time of my life. What's happening? 
So all the Nahang Singhs have got here and now they're all like uh, they're parading in front of each other showing off their skills to everyone. You can see some Nahangs were on three horses at the same time. Whoa! That was very very close. They nearly got trampled over a lot of times as well but it's very electric atmosphere isn't it? Very electric. So Sip, what brought you to Anandpur today? Uh, curiosity and uh, yeah. I would name Curiosity uh, Onka. It's a friend I met in uh, Armitsa and uh, he told me man if you go to India you have to see uh, the Hola Mala. I was like okay let's have a look and uh, here I am uh, maybe one of the biggest day of my life. So much colors, so much music, sounds and people. Uh, it's an absolutely stunning event and I will uh, remember my whole life. Thank you India, thank you Onkar, thank you everybody. <laughs> what flavour is that then? Mango ice cream. Okay. Really, really refreshing after such a hot day. Uh, what's the plan now? The plan now we're going to go back to Amritsar. Yeah. Uh, long drive back, I think, four hours on a normal day. Yeah. But um, everyone, obviously, the, I think a million people here are trying to get back as well. Yeah. So it's just going to be mayhem. I think maybe six hours. Yeah. I'm predicting. How does it feel to be leaving Anandpur side? But it, it's a little bit sad to be leaving because uh, I had such a great time here. Yeah. But now I definitely know that I want to come back to Hola every single year. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And there's a beautiful sunset. We, we need to go back to Amritsar and uh, there's so much traffic our car couldn't uh, get get past to where currently we were staying. So uh, now thankfully we found someone on a motorbike. Singh Baji here has uh, offered to drop us off back to the main road. Yeah. Crazy. I think we're too heavy for it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Have you got yourself? Yeah, my bike. My suitcase needs to go.